What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Fight Network's Downtown Studios. I am John Ramdean. He's the one and only Robin Black. Our discussion today, talking about coaches and their success in mixed martial arts, uh, based on the fact that we know the Black Zillions, one of the most successful teams in mixed martial arts. They seem to have uh, disbanded uh, some of the rumors, uh, coaches that have been there before. Um, how important is it uh, for when you look at your coaching staff to have one that you can rely on? Because again, you can go to any martial mm -hmm. arts gym. They're going to teach you Thai boxing. They're going to teach you jiu-jitsu and wrestling. What is the key ingredient to have success and longevity? Some of the best right now are a coach who's evolving and innovating and driven and passionate about going as far into the truths of martial arts as possible with a great athlete. You've got Conor McGregor and Coach Kavanaugh. You've got Demetrius Johnson and Matt Hume. Uh, you've got Stipe Miocic, and I forget his coach's name, unfortunately, but they've been together developing their game together. I apologize. Uh, but I got hit in the head a lot when I used to fight. Uh, and the 90s, man, I was not good to myself in the 90s. But uh, you see these guys who put their game together like that. Uh, McGregor will come out and say, oh, man, you, you change camps. That's a sign of weakness, of mental weakness. Okay, I get it, but it's always more complicated than this. He came along at a time where he... Uh, uh, was able to evolve forward with somebody else innovating the game with him and they influenced each other. What if he came and he walked into a gym and that guy was terrible and uh, didn't bring something to it? So there are times that it makes sense to change, there are times that it makes sense to explore other things, but when you find that right fit, the two of you can grow together. So you keep that coach, but is, can, are you allowed to still go and explore the world of martial arts with different coaches as long as you come back to your, to your home base and, and the people that help build you? The, the coach's personality and the culture that he builds is a huge part of how the whole picture gets painted. The best ones will say, oh, you're gonna be in California? Yeah, say hi to Eddie Bravo when you're over at the gym over there. Oh, Oh, you're going to be in Milwaukee? Tell Duke I said hi when you go in and you get some work with Duke. Tell me what you learned. That'll be great. They have that open mind. The, the coaches who are terrified their guys are going to leave, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. Your guys will leave, you know, because they can sense. What are you afraid of? What are you afraid that I may learn if I go out there? It is, sometimes it's a natural ingrained paranoia. The coach is a fantastic coach, but he's worried everyone's out to steal his guy. But that becomes self-fulfilling. That great coach developing together, growing together, evolving game, planning what you'd like to achieve three years from now and reverse engineering how you achieve that. You know, you, you look at how Dominic Cruz moves. It took a decade for other people to start moving that way, figure it out. You have to look and say, we want to be there. And with great coaches go, well, we'll need to develop this type of athletic platform. How do we develop the technique for that? And it becomes a long play that you build together. Uh, the, the Black Zillions environment, it felt like, you know, this idea of building a fight team, we're together, we're this team. That's, that hasn't really ever been proven to work. I guess alpha male has somewhat of that reality, but at the same time, they're open. Other people can come. They have regular students. You know, it is an environment where you can learn. The Black Zillion's trying to build a team. Once a, a team, whose team is this? Because Henry Hooft is their leader. Right. He truly is their leader, and he really is the, the, the gem the leadership gem of that thing. But maybe some of the other coaches started t trying to take over, start trying to influence the ownership that they should lead. Henry should be the leader, which is why he left and built his own environment, and they all followed him. They followed him because he's the right leader. We were in Montreal uh, this past weekend for TKO. We had a chance to talk to some brilliant minds of, of martial arts and mixed martial arts, some great coaches. One of the coaches saying it's important for a student to stay with their teacher because mm -hmm. that's the only way you're going to learn because, you know, another one thing we heard this past weekend, some of the highest level coaches, certainly in this country, criticizing for Asahabi, the head coach of uh, TriStar, because they, they're basing everything on wins and losses. Mm -hmm. Well, what's their, their win and loss record? But we, don't we also have to take into consideration when you have a team like the Black Zillions or Duke Rufus's place, any high profile gym where they have an open door policy, this is not a charity, they're yeah. trying to make money. So any fighter can go to Duke Rufus and say, hey, either I want to pay or there's some sort of agreement made to go and train with Duke Rufus. Now, is that a Duke Rufus student? Is Duke Rufus responsible for the win and the loss of that particular individual? Yeah, they call them lag measures. 
Like when you go back and you measure how something produced and you're trying to look for information, those are called lag measures. They happened after the fact. You're supposed to track greatness on lead measures. How, how many you know, sessions are we doing? How much improvement can we measure? Uh, how do we measure improvement? Things that we can uh, uh, try to live up to, things we do in advance. In my opinion, and you and I and many others study the sport and to study the sport and try to to understand what's coming forward is something that interests us and we love to do. You have to study the coaches. You have to study where the training is going. And I can tell you uh, that Greg Jackson is one of the best coaches in the game. I can tell you that Dwayne Ludwig is one of the best coaches. Duke Rufus is one of the best coaches. Faraz Sahabi is one of the best coaches. You know what coaches are criticized the most? Duke Rufus, Faraz Sahabi, yeah, Dwayne Ludwig, and Greg Jackson. Guys. And you know what, what they think of that? They don't give a fuck yeah. because they are not they, you can't get involved in the politics. The politics will always lead you wrong. To spend, to dedicate 60 or 70 hours a week of your life to improvement and teaching and developing and developing yourself as a coach, you cannot dedicate eight hours a week or one hour a week or 30 minutes twice a day to responding on Twitter to people who send you hate. Yeah. You can't. And I'll tell you how many times have we been around for us who's a friend who somebody will talk to him about something and he's like, I don't know what you're talking about. I yeah. do not get involved in the politics. The greats don't. What is it McGregor said? Winners think about winning and losers think about winners. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know what I mean? It, but, but at the same time, the next level of coaches are people you've never heard of right now. And as much as when you see a BJ Penn, and I'm not picking on BJ, I love you, BJ. Come for tacos, man. Uh, when you see somebody who has built a game around a, a certain fundamental blocks, and they worked on improvement, constant improvement, and innovation is different than constant improvement. Constant improvement doesn't lead to innovation, it leads to optimization. Innovation supersedes your optimized improvement, right? So the guys who are innovating and the fighters who are innovating, as much as these fighters, once they fight a certain way, their coaches coach a certain way. And then you'll have new fighters coming in who move and think a different way, and they need coaches who move and teach and think a different way. Some of them will make that transition. Um, Dwayne already uh, is, and Greg Jackson already is, and I'm sure Faraz and Duke are as well. Some will, but some won't. There'll be a new crop of coaches by the end of 2018 that you haven't heard of right now that are gonna have some champions. Can multiple theories and uh, perspectives, can they all work in this game if you have a, a coach who's like you know what why don't you spend more time with this coach and more time with this coach and you can bring it back to us and we can grow because as we were talking about before you look at jose aldo he's had the same coach conor mcgregor is yep. the same coach steep Miocic yep. has had the same coach cody garbrandt some of the most demetrius johnson yep. they've had the same coaches the entire time so if we're seeing what is successful it, this is successful yep. Can there be another way? When I'm studying them and studying not just the lag measures of their results, but the lead measures of where they're going, uh, you know, you get excited by, by talking to Dwayne Ludwig as you think about his goal is even more greatness in, in 2022, and that is admirable. And uh, he may well be pioneering things we don't understand, and he is already doing that. But to me, Matt Hume is the guy that I want to study on the highest level. When Matt Hume mm -hmm. looks at things, and let's say you are coaching a fighter and you're like, okay, well, we have an issue because my strength and conditioning coach doesn't necessarily understand the recovery that we need from wrestling when he brings him in and he's not aware of everything. Some coaches push those things out and say, you don't need that. Just work with me and, I'll, and that's one option. What uh, Matt does is he becomes a high level strength and conditioning coach. He studies it. As the thing forks off and there are the new things that need to be developed, S curves of knowledge keep moving up. You get to the top of the S curve and you plateau, you drop down, study something new and a new S curve forms. Matt Hume wants to study the martial arts to find perfection in all areas. In doing that, he brings up Demetrius Johnson with the idea of creating the perfect martial artist and perfect athlete for the environment of the cage and the rules of mixed martial arts. And I don't think there's anybody in the world right now on a higher level than Matt Hume, and that's why I want to study Can him. Matt Hume do that with anybody else, or did, was it a perfect storm that he found an individual, an athlete, the level of Demetrius Johnson, who can comprehend mixed martial arts at the level that he can comprehend, or is this, you know what, if you could dedicate the time like Demetrius yeah. Johnson, Listen to everything I say, I'm going to make you a genius of combat. 
Conor McGregor says he's just a regular person like John Ramdeen or Robin Black or Chase Kaiser behind the camera, uh, but he isn't. He, he has genetic advantages, and that is a truth. That, that Let's try to talk about this on five rounds a little bit today. N uh, nature and nurture are both real. People are like, well, you know, if you're genetically, Lance Armstrong was going to be the greatest. No, he also had to train. Yeah. He also had to study. He also had to cheat. He also had to do all the things he had to do. It wasn't one or the other, and it's the same thing. Matt Hume could make a 22-year-old Robin Black pretty decent, but then you've got Demetrius Johnson who genetically, not just his physical body, but his genetic ability to learn, his desire to keep learning, his trust in Matt Hume, he's the perfect pupil. So you have the perfect coach who has been developed from Bruce Lee to Dan Inosanto to Matt Hume's father to Matt Hume to his own fighting to studying the truths of martial arts to studying the truth I should be going this way yeah, instead yeah. to studying the truths of teaching uh, training your body training your mind all of those things and along the way he brings in a near perfect athlete and, and develops a relationship with him so the two of them can grow together and that's why you see the greatest martial artist we've ever seen there are so many incredible teachers in mixed martial arts we will certainly keep our eye out for the next big coach in either the UFC or in mixed martial arts in general